Hi, I'm Craig Wilson, editor of Stuff Magazine, and today we're looking at the Instax Square SQ10. It's the latest in Fujifilm's long-running line of Instax instant cameras. But what's different here is instead of printing immediately the moment you take the photo, what you've essentially got is a compact digital camera sensor and then an instant printer attached to it. It removes a little bit of the charm and spontaneity that you get with the regular Instax cameras, but it does mean that you're less liable to waste shots. And given that they work out at about 15 Rand a shot, or about 150 Rand for a pack of 10, that can make a lot of difference. As the name suggests, instead of the usual 3x2 ratio photos, what you get out of this one is square photos, or 1x1. One one. Now of course, for generation Instagram, that's going to be a far more familiar format. You power the camera on by twisting this ring around the lens in front. And then there's two shutter release buttons. Now these are programmable, so you can set one to release the shutter and the other to cycle through modes. And that's how I've got it set up here. I find the right hand side as the shutter release is the most natural, and the left hand side lets me cycle between things like standard, bulb, and multiple exposure. And that last one is one of these benefits of the digital sensor combined with the printer. Now you can do multiple exposure shots, which of course previously would have been impossible. On top is the slot that the printed pictures come out of, and this is the lock that moves the whole screen off and allows you to load the film. Now, of course, the screen is another new addition to Instax that we haven't seen on the previous cameras. And this allows you to preview shots after you've taken them and decide which ones to print. It also lets you adjust the images and you can apply a bunch of filters. There's 10 of them pre-installed and adjust things like exposure compensation and vignette. You can do this before you take the image or afterwards and before you print it. There's also a switch on the side here that says auto and manual. Set it to auto and the moment you take a picture it will be printed out. Set it to manual and it will be stored to the onboard memory where you can edit it and print it later. The camera also supports micro SD cards, although as usual with cameras it's not included so you'll have to buy that separately. Under the flap on the left hand side you have the battery slot. And there's another slot on the other side. And this gives you a micro USB port for charging and houses the micro SD card. And on the bottom, you've got a standard tripod mount. Loading the film is as easy as pushing the switch on the back and then pulling the rear cover forward. You unbox the film, line up the yellow dot with the yellow dot, close it up again, and turn it on. Immediately, it'll print out the first cover sheet that's there to protect the exposures beneath it. and you're good to go. While there's plenty of features on the SQ10 you don't find on other Instax cameras, one of the things that's missing is the front-facing selfie mirror. It's just a little convex, shiny surface that you find on the face of most Instax cameras, and it's curious that they haven't included it here. But it's by no means a deal breaker. You can still take selfies, it's just a bit more tricky to figure out what they look like. Of course, as you can check them after the fact, and you can store an awful lot of them on an SD card. You can keep shooting till you get it right. Below the three inch display on the back, you've got a range of controls. First, there's a four way controller and adjustment ring. So this you can cycle around or push in either corner when in the various settings to adjust them. Up top are the range of filters. There's 10 to choose from, and they've got a very sort of Instagram feel to them. There's an exposure compensation button that lets you adjust the brightness or darkness of the image on screen. It does it in third stops, and compared to the regular Instax cameras that just give you three options of sort of brighter and darker or regular, and that are a complete guessing game really, here you've got pretty good and pretty fine grain control. Left of center there's the vignette button, and this darkens the corners and of course draws the eye to the center of the image. Just below center and to the left is the preview button. This opens up the folder of captured images. You can zoom in on them to check sharpness, or you can zoom out to see more images that are stored on the card. You can then use the four-way controller to move around within them, and the center button to select. This of course lets you edit all of the photos after the fact, and you can apply a range of filters, or any of the other features like the brighten and darken, and the vignette, after the fact and before printing.
At the bottom is the back button. And in this particular menu, that also gives you information about the image. And this green button in the bottom right is the one to print. Pressing any of the shutter buttons on the front will take you back to the shooting mode. And in terms of actual shooting, while the startup's pretty fast, it can be a little slow to capture after the fact and a little slow to open the image library and browse through them. But given that it's not really meant as a very high-end digital camera, this is a small price to pay for the added convenience of being able to print your pictures on the run. You also can't move the focus point, it's always going to be in the center. But what you can do is half press the button and then of course recompose as you would on a regular camera. When you're in shooting mode, pressing the center menu button opens the setting options. Here you can choose from shooting modes, whether or not the flash is on, whether you want a self timer, if you'd like the autofocus illuminator up front on or off, adjust the date and time, put a date stamp on your images, choose a language, and adjust things like the volume for button presses. We've got them turned off because, well, that's our preference with all things gadgety. There's a lot to like about the Instax SQ10. For a start, the added controls are really nice touch, particularly when each picture feels like a real commitment, because they're not cheap. I was worried that it was going to take away some of the magic and some of the charm of the mistakes of instant photography. But never fear, thanks to some discrepancy between what you see on screen and what's actually printed, there's still an element of chance. What is nice is being able to carry it around, shoot with carefree abandon, and then pick the shots you want to print out afterwards. Of course, if you're really, really organized and serious about your Instagram, you can also take pictures straight off the SD card and upload them to social media that way. But there is a real charm to physical, tangible prints. That's always been the appeal of the Instax cameras, and it's still intact here with the SQ10. It costs a little more than the regular ones, but depending on your shooting behavior, it may well be worth it.